It is day two of DeepSeek's five days of open source releases, and they have gone ahead and dropped what day two's release is, which is called Deep EP. Now, as a disclaimer, this is really rather technical. And while I do believe I said that in yesterday's video, I have to say that compared to yesterday's video, this is really rather technical. <laughs> so I want to just preface this by saying this will likely be a shorter video. And the whole kind of idea behind what I want to do in today's video is just give us a surface level or higher level understanding of what this actually is, how it can trickle down and affect us, and just some of the cool kind of magic behind how this actually works and what it does. Without wasting any more time, we're really just going to jump right into the GitHub repository, which I have open right here, and we'll get our first look at DBP. So, Deep EP. <laughs> so we can see that it is a communication library tailored for MOE and expert parallelism. It provides high throughput and low latency all to all GPU kernels, which are also known as MOE dispatch and combine. The library also combines low precision operations, including FPA. Let's just jump into what the heck this actually means. So first and foremost, mixture of experts, or as we see here, MOE. If you have heard this term, you may have seen it in passing and be kind of abstractly familiar with it. But for the purpose of this, we can think of a mixture of experts model as akin to having a room where inside that room we have a doctor, a mechanic, a teacher, and a carpenter. Now, in a traditional LLM, if we had a question, we would actually need to ask each one of those individuals, even if the question was only pertaining to a domain that one of them was an expert in. So for example, let's say that I have a broken finger and I walk into that room. Obviously, I just need to see the doctor because none of the other experts in there would be able to assist me with that specific request. An MOE model is essentially something that has all of those different experts. However, instead of taking a request and giving it to all of them, it knows who to actually deliver the request to, meaning that everything becomes much more efficient. So this model could actually be rather large in terms of size and the amount of knowledge it has. However, it is more efficient because it will only activate the person who needs to be activated. So if I walk in and have a broken table and need the carpenter to fix it, the model knows, oh, we're just going to call upon the carpenter. Whereas in perhaps a non-MOE um, LLM or model architecture, it would basically just ask everyone, which is less efficient and more compute intensive. So now that we've touched upon MOE, we can really just go over deep EP. And the problem I have with trying to really touch upon and show this repository is that a lot of what this talks about are things that folks like hobbyists like myself have never really gotten hands-on experience with. So it's a bit harder to perhaps conceptualize how some of this works. To put it quite simply, Deep EP is something that optimizes the actual training and serving processes that occur with MOE models. They talk about, like we can see it here, the NVLink domain to RDMA domain, and we'll briefly touch upon those, but something I do want to mention here is that in the actual original announcement of this whole open source week, they talked about how they were going to share things that were battle tested. They do mention right here the DeepSeek V3 paper, and essentially what this is showing is that they actually use some of these technologies in training the models that are already out there that have been highly praised and used by folks. So so this is a battle tested drop and even though this isn't something you and I can go play with or really get hands on with right now this is perhaps something we have in an abstract roundabout way if we've used like DeepSeek v3 deep EP is a set of optimized kernels to basically encompass or direct the training process for MOE models in a large scale data center setup. So what exactly does that mean? Imagine for this specific like explanation, a kernel is a set of tasks that a bunch of little workers all need to perform. Imagine if you were scheduling all those tasks and giving them all to the same workers or 
giving all the workers the same tasks, you would have a big chance there to actually optimize things in terms of efficiencies. Why you could notice like, oh, if we do this, then these workers are able to talk to each other a bit faster, saving like this much amount of time. And even though that seems like a small little saving in a huge training setup like this, it becomes more prudent and actually has more far reaching implications. And that's what Deep EP does is as we see here, it talks about forwarding data from the NVLink domain to the RDMA domain, high throughput in a huge data center like that. Imagine that we have a thousand servers. And for the purpose of this example, think that a server has like four graphics cards in it. So there's a thousand individual servers, each with four graphics cards inside them. The graphics cards inside an individual server are going to be communicating through, as we see right here, this NVLink domain. You may be familiar with NVLink, which is just really like a physical bridge between the graphics cards physically connecting them. This was actually something that was offered on some consumer cards, but I don't think following the 3000 series, it made its way back to consumers like myself. Um, don't quote me on that, but these hopper generation cards like the H100s and stuff still can use this. The next would actually be kind of figuring out how, okay, like the server with four cards, the four cards can talk to each other very quickly. But how does that one server talk to the other 999 servers in the building? And that's where the RDMA domain we see here comes into play, where basically that is more of a networking related um, consideration. It uses something called like NVIDIA's InfiniBand which if we scroll down here, there's a whole network configuration section for this talking about InfiniBand. And again, these are things we perhaps haven't really heard about because they are really kind of relegated to the big data centers with millions of dollars in hardware in them and the setups to serve like ChatGPT or Claude or DeepSeek. So it is harder to kind of put a face to the name for a lot of this, but by just kind of explaining some of what these terminologies are in a simpler way, I hope to at least give a little bit of like a warm up to this repository. So basically from what we see right here in the second paragraph, which we're only on, Deep EP is basically an optimized kernel to help handle the actual like routing of the MOE like request. Remember the... <laughs> The request for an MOE needs to go to a specific domain expert instead of just to everybody. So that obviously introduces a lot of considerations and room for improvement if you can actually more efficiently get that request to go where it needs to go as fast as possible. And that is one of the things that allows that optimization here is that basically that was all on the table. The dispatching combined operations in what we have here are more sophisticated than all to all scenarios. Each token needs to be routed to different GPU ranks based on the top K index involving complex control layout logic. Our kernel has fused these operations together for optimal performance. <laughs> so basically, Imagine we have an existing out of the box network setup that allows big models to be trained and it works well and it's fast. So that's this gentleman's asking, well, okay, how does this compare speed wise? Do you have any speed comparisons between this out of the box solution and then the one you're showing here? And the maintainer really actually gives us a good way to understand what this is with this answer because he says, well, not only is it a bit different, but like ours actually handles the necessity of each token needing to be routed to different GPUs based on what domain expert it needs to go. So basically what he's saying right here is that we have efficiently been able to actually define where a specific request should go. This is almost akin to like setting up a very congested city's traffic pattern. And I don't want to ramble on too much. And I understand this is likely going to be a convoluted video since I can't really go download and show this. Now, even though it talks about being run on a Hopper GPU, which as we saw yesterday, we rented an H100 and actually tried the thing. Unfortunately, some of the prerequisites here like this actually require root access to the server to install. And beyond that, even if I were just to rent an H100 instance right now, this wouldn't really make a lot of sense without the actual NVLink infrastructure, the RDMA infrastructure. Basically, it wouldn't 
wouldn't make sense without having multiple servers in a data center, each with multiple H100s or whatever hopper cards inside of it. It's physical network connections and things of that sort between different servers and stuff like that. This all is actually really cool under the hood, but it is so darn like unrelatable for hobbyists like myself that it can become intimidating and dissuade one from actually appreciating the complexities and nuances of it, if you will. With that, we can basically scroll down and okay, there's some inference examples in model training or inference prefilling. So there's a bunch of code here to talk about like, hey, um, we got this request, we need to send it to the domain expert. Here's the code that tells us where to send it and et cetera, what to do like that. They talk about some efficiencies here, which based on this, I, I believe it's just about like, um, pre-allocating like the tensor resource to the correct amount of what's actually going to be necessitated so we're not guessing which would be more inefficient don't quote me on that but <laughs> we they talk about like the use in inference decoding and then we scroll down here and they talk about micro batch overlapping and they talk about those uh, stream multiprocessors where basically okay here was zero and one here's two workers but they were able to overlap them and it's faster because now instead of those two workers doing something, this one worker is doing it now. And that is obviously a huge efficiency boost. And again, don't quote me on any of like this, uh, like graphical <laughs> parsing that I'm doing live on camera. But I think that's like generally good enough. The last thing I want to talk about is down here in the notices section. For extreme performance, we discover and use a behavior out of doc PTX instruction, and then that is listed right here. We can see it leads to an undefined behavior, accessing volatile GPU memory with non-coherent read-only PTX modifiers.nc. Guarantees on hopper architecture, performance will be much better. Again, we're not so much worried as what all of these specific things mean, but more about the more perhaps broad reaching implications of this, because personally, this actually excites me and I think it's really cool. So quick note, PTX, as we can see right here, is a very weird and like hard to understand Parallel thread execution is a low-level virtual machine and instruction set architecture. It exposes the GPU as a data parallel computing device. This is essentially a very low-level language in with which we can access and define actions that the GPU will take. We can see if you're familiar maybe with like assembly or stuff like that, I suppose one could draw parallels to that and this. This is really like a very low level way to access the graphics card. And what we see here that was done is actually experimentation at this low level. And this makes me really excited because this is something that could perhaps trickle down to older consumer cards like the 3000 or 4000 series. Now, I am not saying that this specific out of uh, behavior out of dock instruction that they found would work on these cards. No, but what I'm saying is that it is possible to have folks like that who are very talented playing with and tweaking with such low level stuff like this, that it is very possible we could get like performance enhancements and improvements for our existing hardware. And that's one of the reasons I did want to actually actually really share this that it excited me because it shows possibilities for optimization that may actually be applicable in the future to home folks like myself who want to run local LLMs and things like that. Something people are really going to be like, huh, that's interesting is definitely about this where it, behavior out of doc, this just means like this was not documented to actually cause this to happen, but just by experimenting and playing with it, they found that this has extreme performance in this scope, obviously. So that is really like <laughs> the, the kind of depth that I'm going to look at this repository and talk about it on camera. I really just did want to share this as it is day two of DeepSeek's open source releases, and I want to cover all of the repositories that get dropped, no matter how in-depth and like um, unreachable to me physically they are. So I hope this made some level of sense, and I know I say this sometimes jokingly, but like if you have any questions, please just Google them because <laughs> no, uh, no. But uh, yeah, so that's going to conclude this one. And I look forward to seeing what tomorrow brings us. And I really hope it's just like a, hey, you're going to run this on radio. It's a, it's a model. Have fun.